And those things don't even appreciate in value. They literally lose value when the next version of the game comes out. So it's like, you know, um, with NBA Top Shot, like it's going to be interesting. You know, these are NFTs. These are actually going to be appreciating in value and they're going to be assets for your gameplay. Like I think, yeah, especially for the younger generations, they will quickly understand what this is and they're going to quickly, very, very quickly adapt to this. You're in the lab. All right. So before we get started with anything, I want to welcome you again to the Find Your Breakthrough podcast. So normally, like when I do these podcasts, it's like I do research and I break down the guests into like really like deep interviews and I do different things with them. Mm. But with NBA Top Shot has given me a new outlet to just kind of find really dope people to chop it up with. And yeah. it's like nothing planned. It's just us having fun talking about something that we love and something that we, you know, we're just passionate about. So that's why I wanted to connect with you and get you on the show because I've seen everything you and your sister have been doing and I love it. I love the community you guys are building. I love the content you're putting out. But before we dive too much further, can you give an intro into Steph and who you are? Because no one, people watching this, especially for, from the In The Lab community, they probably may not know unless they're into NBA Top Shot. So can you give us some background on who you are and what got you into Top Shot? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm honored to be on your show. <laughs> Very excited to be here and, and kind of uh, have a good conversation with you. Um, but yeah, so how I got into Top Shot, um, I started back in October, which doesn't seem that long ago, but in Top Shot world, that seems like forever. I'm so jealous of you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Right. And, um, and I didn't even start like that early because I only started when the, when the beta opened up to the public, but there were people in there during the closed beta, which, you know, had started in June, for example. So, you know, there's definitely plenty of people that started before me, but, um, but obviously, you know, I definitely started before most users because most users started in, you know, 2021. So, um, yeah, how I figured it out, uh, I mean, how I even found out about Top Shot was a couple of years ago, you know, I started learning about cryptocurrency and um, I started doing research on it. I didn't have a bunch of capital to invest at all, but I had time. So I just spent a lot of time researching and, and kind of digging into crypto. And that's when I learned about NFTs. And that's when I learned about uh, CryptoKitties, which was created by Dapper Labs, which if you don't know, Dapper Labs created NBA Top Shot. So um, Dapper Labs had created CryptoKitties. CryptoKitties uh, uh, had run, ran, runs on, they are changing it over, but runs on Ethereum. And you have to use Ethereum to buy these digital kitties. And you can breed them, um, you can collect them. It's really cool. And so I had bought a few kitties and then I had kind of, uh, you know, stepped away a little bit because I, I really didn't have much capital to be investing in these digital kitties, but I found them very, very interesting. And a couple years later, fast forward to October, 2020, I was like, what happened to my kitties? I need, I need to, you know, check on them. What have they been doing? <laughs> so I log, I try to log in. I try to find the website and I ran into the Dapper Labs website and it said, NBA Top Shot uh, is coming oh, to Dapper wow. Labs. Like we've been in this closed beta. We're going to be opening the beta to the public. Put your email in to sign up. And I was like, Ooh, this seems very interesting. Because at the time, Gary V, and if you don't know who Gary V is, he's a huge entrepreneur in the social media world. Uh, he was really pushing sports cards, you know, physical sports cards. And I was like, okay, I'm super into Gary V. And if he's pushing physical sports cards, like these digital, um, you know, moments, which are not, which are not cards, they're not digital cards. They're basically digital video clips uh, wrapped into a moment. And I thought they were really cool. I'm like, this, this will be the next level. So uh, that's when I got into Top Shot October and uh, it's been a journey ever since. That's crazy. You really like, you got it on the ground floor, which is cool, but I also have so much respect for you because you actually were, I think one of few people who have crypto kitties. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of people may know about it, but they didn't collect it. So you've been kind of moving along that path, which is like really cool to see. Um, but before, so outside of Top Shot and crypto kitties and the whole crypto world, like who is Steph? Like, what do you do? No, like give us some background on who you are. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, for, so ever since I dropped out of college, uh, I think I was 21 years old when I dropped out and I had one more year left. I was majoring in communication and I was like, dude, you know what? You know, I had to spend, I had to spend my own money. You know, I was working, working hard on the side, trying to pay for college. And I was like, you know what, this is really isn't for me. You know, I don't even know why I'm majoring in communication. Like, to learn how to communicate like I, I don't know I just did it because you know my family was like you need to do this like this is you know kind of your way out uh, of your situation 
And so, you know, I did it for that reason. But then after a while, I was like, if I'm paying for this myself and I'm putting money into this, you know, and I'm not happy with what I'm learning about, you know, I need to do something about this. And I dropped out one year before graduation. Um, and I decided to put my money and spend thousands of dollars on online courses. And at the time, Ty Lopez was actually the guy who I was investing a lot in. And I was learning about social media from him. And at the time, I was super kind of like a private person. But um, I was learning about, you know, the power of using social media to, to leverage your audience and you can make money from that. And, and I was like, oh, this is, this is interesting. So um, after I, shortly after I dropped out and started taking courses, I decided to start a glitter company with my twin sister, Jennifer, uh, who's actually got into Topshop one day after me. Um, and she's been in it ever since she, she creates a lot of content around it. But we started a glitter company together called the Glitter Twins. And we were selling um, glitter to you know, people that go to festivals and raves, mostly through Instagram. And we kind of grew our little business through Instagram. Uh, we had that for years. Uh, and so, you know, I've definitely had experience being a content creator. Um, you know, I'm a content creator on TikTok, uh, grew, grew my TikTok. I've had it for over a year, grew to over 600,000 followers. My niche is, you know, helping kids in the LGBTQ community kind of be more confident with who they are. And now I'm kind of transitioning into, um, Twitter and Twitch with NBA Top Shot. So it's like, I've been through all these different niches and uh, you know, just kind of being on camera, being on video, going live. So I have a lot of experience with that. Um, and that's kind of my goal, you know, is just to, to be a face in the space. Yeah. And so, you know, that's what I've been doing. I love it. I love that you're also proven that you've like, I had no idea about the TikTok. So that, that's awesome to know that you actually built a presence on another platform as well. And it's cool that you're like an entrepreneur with your sister and you guys have some experience building a social media brand and you know what it takes to grow in that space, which can be a lot, especially when you have, you know, you're doing something very niche. So that's cool to see some success there. So NBA Top Shot, obviously it's going to be like our main topic today. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. I know you're excited about it. Let's first just touch on the fact that there's been some big news today. And yeah. I was predicting something was going to happen around all-star weekend and you know, like something was gonna happen, but I had no idea it was going to be the rookie moments. Cause I didn't even, I mean, uh, the rising stars moments. Cause I, I didn't even know they weren't going to play, but yeah. what's your thoughts on how, you know, what happened today with the announcement of the new pack drop on March 7th? Yeah, today, today they just announced that they're going to be dropping, um, the rising stars rare pack, uh, which we don't know the price. We don't know, you know, the final mint number for all the moments, you know, people are guessing right now. But um, I think it's going to be huge because this is the very first time that the NBA Twitter account actually retweeted yes. about that. Yes. And I thought that was huge. I had like retweeted the fact that they retweeted it. I'm like, oh my God, like, is everyone seeing this? And uh, I think it's going to be really big for, you know, NBA Top Shot. They've been making big moves. NBA players have been getting involved with Top Shot. You know, you see Josh Hart really leading the NBA players with with this by streaming live, you know, pack openings, doing giveaways. And he's not even getting paid to do this. I mean, he gets a cut, you know, naturally yeah. because he's part of the NBA. But yeah, we're gonna see a lot of a lot of really cool stuff happening, I think. It's exciting. Like when the NBA players first started getting on, like I said, Josh, Damian Lee, Terry, all these guys, like that was really dope. And it's like it shows the future potential like what's gonna happen. Cause I mean when they first came on, you saw their moments shot up in price for certain players. You saw Terry doing stuff for charity, offering like a signed jersey if you buy my moment. And like, I was just like, man, like this is like going to be the future of like collectibles. It's like, it's so cool. So for me, my favorite thing about this, you know, compared to like, did you collect Pokemon cards? Did you collect other stuff like growing up? Yeah, I, um, growing up, I collected import racer, um, sports cars, okay. little cars. Cool. Uh, specifically import racers. I didn't collect Hot Wheels. I was like, nah, Hot Wheels is too mainstream. I collected import racers. And if anyone knows what I'm talking about, dude, oh my God. Like I still have my collection. I only have like 20 of them, but they're very, very special to me. And um, I also, I also, I mean, I'm staring at uh, three binders full of sports cards. I, I used to collect sports cards. I didn't know much about them. Mm. I don't even have anything that's very valuable to be honest, but I just liked, you know, collecting. Although I never got into Pokemon. That's so interesting. It's still cool that you have like the sports cards. I actually never heard of those. Uh, I'm like a classic boy growing up. So I had Hot Wheels all over the place, yeah. but I actually yeah. never heard of the ones you talked about. So I'll have to check them out. Dude, um, import racers, man. They're yeah, so under like import racers. That's actually really cool. So anyway, what I was going to say is like, you know, we grew up, most of us grew up collecting Pokemon or Yugi or some type of like card. It would be put in your binder. Then probably your mom threw them away 
or whatever happened, which a lot of people are trying to scramble when Pokemon shopped in millions of dollars, which it is now. The thing I love about this is the fact that it's just all online. Like, you know, you could text me right now your link. I'll just go check out your moments, check the value, see what you got. Maybe we could trade and swap stuff. For me, that's what gets me excited about the future potential of it. And I want to throw this question to you. I think it's a no brainer, but I just want to hear thoughts on it. NBA has always been at the forefront of doing things differently and just being a game changer, in my opinion, from other sports leagues. How fast do you think other sports leagues adopt this? And do you think they are going to adopt it? Yeah, for sure. We already see if you go on to uh, the Flow (laughs) website, you know, Flow is the blockchain technology that is powering NBA Top Shot. And yes, Flow, you know, you see them and they're, they're starting to partner with other teams as well. Um, you also, we've already, we already know this. I mean, some people might not know this, but UFC is going to be happening very soon. Yep. Uh, and, and yeah, definitely, you know, uh, I see that they're, they're talking with the, uh, NFL, a lot of people, you know, have been spectating about that. Yeah. I think all sports eventually will be on top shot, you know, top shots, not just NBA top shot, like top shot will be kind of like a platform for a bunch of different things. And yes. I think NBA is just the first one. And I love that it's the first one, but you know, we're seeing a lot of other things. WNBA is going to be happening very soon as well. Yeah. yeah. I just think there's so much like potential around it, like from the sports leagues to Disney and whoever else is going to hop into this space and start like putting out cool things that people want to be a part of. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm really excited for like the sports leagues. The NFL is going to be huge. NHL. I heard them already talking about it. WNBA is going to have its own like super, super big niche community, which I'm excited about. And I just know that I'm going to be monitoring stuff so that when it happens, we could try to be the first in on, you know, all these different like, you know, ventures and, and um, sports communities joining it. But the UFC, I actually didn't know about that. So that's interesting that you brought that up because that could be, those could be some really, really cool moments for knockouts and different things I'm thinking about in my mind already. Yeah, you can actually put, put uh, you can sign up and put your email in right now. Like a lot of things, you know, they're not even, you can't even put your email for, but go on the uh, like UFC flow website or something. Yeah. I think it's a flow website and sign up, put your email in for the UFC so that you're the first to be notified about that. Cause yeah, you want to be early to these things, you know, cause uh, yeah. it, it's 100%. like top top. everyone wanted to be early, you know? Yeah. No, that, that's a good little tip for everyone out there. Go to onflow.org and sign up because I literally just did while I was talking to you. So nice. um, yeah, that, that's that's huge. Okay, so NBA Top Shot, what gets you most? Ex- First of all, NBA fan, I'm assuming there's got to be some level there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, the reason why I got into Top Shot wasn't actually specifically because of NBA. I was actually more interested in the NFT and yeah. the blockchain side of it. And because I was really into that. And so, you know, I've actually, NBA Top Shot has kind of grown my love for NBA, um, you know, way more than it used to because I, I played basketball in high school. You know, I enjoy the sport. Um, and I used to watch a lot of basketball as a kid, but but then I kind of like, you know, fell off and I wasn't as interested. Um, but now I'm kind of growing to, you know, be paying more attention to it. Um, but I think I, think I kind of want to represent the people that aren't necessarily huge NBA fans um, that are just interested in, you know, the fact that it's an NFT, the blockchain behind it yes. that are maybe, you know, just interested in learning more about the NBA because of this. So I yeah, totally agree. I, I'm not like a huge, I don't know everything, you know, about the NBA. No, that's fair. And I actually re- like appreciate you for actually like saying that. Um, mm-hmm. But I think even for me, like, I'm just excited to educate people about like, this is the NFT. It's the beginning. It's built on blockchain. It's like, it's good to like educate them on like, what is blockchain? What's crypto? And like now, you know, people, everyone knows about Bitcoin. Right. But obviously everyone's skeptical and, you know, some people got in, some people didn't. And a lot of people just brush it to the side. So now it's kind of just reintroducing the concept like, yo, this is a mainstream thing, NFTs and blockchain. Like, and you can use this, like you said, as a foray to teach people about, yeah, you may not be a huge NBA fan, but just dive in. Just, I always tell people just dive in, like try and get a pack, just get a cheap moment and just be a part of it to like start learning, you know? Cause I feel like that's the biggest thing. Just dive in and then experience it. Like when you first opened the, your first pack, like what was your, experience like what was your like mindset because i don't think did you, when you opened the first pack did you know what was going to happen uh when i first opened my first pack i think it was the new york versus cali pack, common pack i want to say um and well keep in mind back in october when i first started there were packs just sitting on the website like people weren't just buying packs like crazy and the reason being is because a there wasn't much demand and b 
crazy. The packs were actually negative EV. So for example, I was, I never really wanted to buy a $9 base pack on the website that came with three moments because that's an average of $3 a moment. And literally most moments were going for a dollar on the marketplace. So I was like, why would I buy a $9 pack? And I could potentially lose money on that. Like, why would I do that? So I was just buying $1 um, buys on the marketplace. But my first pack that I opened, um, it wasn't just like a regular base set common. It was like more of a special common. And I think it was the New York versus Cali. And uh, I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. Like, I, I really just enjoyed the experience. I think I filmed it too, just in case. I was like, I don't know if this is going to blow up or not. Like, yeah. I don't know when this is going to blow up, but I should just like film it just in case. And I like filmed it. But uh, yeah, like eventually I'll release those videos. I have my first legendary pack opening, first rare pack okay. opening. I, I pulled LeBron. I have pulled two LeBron uh, 2020 NBA final rares from packs. Like I filmed those all, but I just like... What? It was like, just in case this blows up, you know, cause nobody <laughs> knew that it was going to blow up so quickly. Like we really didn't think that we kind of yeah. thought that it was going to be a long journey ahead. Yeah. You know, even when I started, so I started late, I started in January, but still earlier than many other people. Mm -hmm. And I was just so excited because I was getting moments for $2 and $3 still. Yeah. So I was just getting moments and I was like, oh man, I'm going to be, so basically I took my foot off the gas. Pedal. I was like, okay, we're going to be chilling. You know, I'll take my time, get the moments and learn more. And then all of a sudden it's just like, it just like took off yeah. and you know, those moments are now worth obviously like 10 X or whatever. And it's just been like crazy. Um, but with the packs, what's your thoughts on holding them and not opening them? That's a great question because I'm notorious for holding my packs and some people <laughs> okay. don't understand that yeah. or they think it's controversial or whatever. And, and um, you know, I definitely have my reasoning behind it. I think it depends on kind of your mindset behind it because some people are like, well, why wouldn't you just open the pack and, you know, you know, either decide to hold the contents inside or decide to sell them and get better moments that you want instead. And I'm like, well, the reason why I'm holding it is because I'm thinking really, really long term with this. So, you know, we're in series two. I, I saved some packs from series one, but I only have two packs from series one and they're both the rookie debut rare packs. Oh. Um, but I just started kind of saving from series two. I think I have 12 total packs saved uh, of different kinds. And my, my, my logic behind it is that, you know, series 30, series 100, people that are brand new, you know, when this becomes mainstream, you know, we barely even touch the surface with people that are joining Top Shot. Exactly. When this becomes more mainstream, they're going to want, people are going to want, you know, a, an opportunity to open packs all the way from series two or series yeah. one. And, and there's a probability of what's going to be in there. And it's a gamble. And it's going to be, you know, it's kind of going to be like a little bit of a lottery where it's like, Yep. Dude, how much am I willing to pay to take a chance that, you know, there's a LeBron number one in here or, or whatever it is, right? Because you can kind of calculate because of the blockchain, you kind of know what could potentially be in it. Um, but I think they're going to be extremely, extremely valuable because of the scarcity, because most people will not save their packs. So because of that, uh, you know, and eventually you will be able to save, I mean, you will be able to sell unopened packs on the website. Yes. Yep. Um, and, and maybe even you will be able to trade, you know, unopened packs on the website. Yeah, there's just so much potential with it. We haven't even seen what people can really do with unopened packs yet. And uh, for that reason, I'm, I'm going to be saving mine for years, I think. So I also love that you're saving it. I think there's like, you know, a lot of different ways to look at it. First is to each their own. Some people just don't care. And that's mm -hmm. fine. Like, you know, you enjoy your, your, pa your hustle here and your passion. For me, I'm like struggling because I'm like, man, like, you know, you had some couple packs and like, it's so exciting to open it. So it's like almost like it's teasing you. You know, it's like this pack's like calling you like, yo, like just open me up, let, you know, see what's inside. But I also like love that you like, I love that because like you said, it's on blockchain. You can basically have an opportunity to tell what could potentially be in there. Like if some of those top moments are uncollected and unseen for, like your pack could be like a hundred K pack or a million dollar pack. And I was like, I think that that's, what's so unique about it. It's like, and that's why like, I'm happy that you're hodling it. Cause I've heard a few people say on both sides of the fence. But I just feel like, man, if you had like a LeBron one or anything, just of a high, a good player that's rare, you know, the possibilities of the bidding war on that would be crazy. And that's yeah. Like and you don't even have to necessarily save them to sell. You can also save them to then just get enjoyment from yeah. opening them when you're in series 100 and you decide, you know what, this is a special <laughs> day. I'm going to open a series two, literally an ancient piece of history. I'm going to open yeah. this up myself. You could also open it up yourself. Like maybe I'll do that. I don't know, but yeah, there's so much potential. And, and 
it's just like right now it's just so underrated like people do not want to save their packs because it's hard enough to get a pack and then you have to save it you know i know, I know. <laughs> that was like my struggle i opened a pack live yesterday and i was like man i should have just saved it but i was like you know what it's fun connecting with people and the content side is also like fun right um yeah. so yeah. you have you said you have like 12 or so, I think packs? so. yeah okay, cool. 12 or 13 right now that's that's actually wicked so what has been your favorite pack so far that you've opened that I've opened, yeah. uh, probably the, um, 20, this was from series one, okay. the 2020 finals yeah. rare pack. Um, I got, I got, a, I actually, I got a few of those packs. I think I got two and I got uh, a LeBron in each one. So that was really yeah. nice. And what about, that's so crazy. And what about the packs that are unopened? Do you have one that's like, you're yeah. like, yo, this is, this could be the one. Dude. Um, I mean, I have, it's kind of a tiebreaker because from series one, I have the rookie debut. I have two of those rare packs, rookie debut. Mm -hmm. And those are going to be pretty, like, those are pretty nice. And then from series two, my favorite one is, um, I have the hollow, uh, legendary pack. And you have the hollow pack. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. Sheesh. You have a nice little, uh, collection. So do you mind if we pull up your collection? Sure. Yeah. Go, go for okay, it. Okay. So what, what's the, what's the, uh, username? Steph. Yeah, man, you got this, the OG. <laughs> just my, just my name. That's going to come after you. Let's see. All right. So we pull it up. So let it's me, let's see how many moments do you have? Oh, dang. You got to get up. You got to uh, actually, I, so during this, so if you kind of don't understand like what's been going on, um, you know, this is a market and it acts like a market. So there's going to be huge pumps, dips, you know what I mean? That's always going to happen. Um, and so during this last huge pump, uh, we're kind of in a little bit of a dip right now, yep. but during this last huge pump, I was literally selling so much and then just reinvesting in, um, in low cereal, like good quality. And so, um, I was, yeah, so I was playing the, uh, quality game during the dips. I play the quantity game. So like when I feel like we're kind of at the bottom of a dip is when I'll really just buy a lot of quantity, but I went from like 420 moments to like, I have 160 now. So wow. I don't even have that many moments right now, to be honest, but, um, yeah, that's, that's, I wish that you can see unopened packs, by the way, I was going to tell you that, that yeah. in the future, you can probably see that. That'd be sick. that will be sick. Um, okay. That makes sense. You had a lot, you sold some, uh, to other people in the marketplace, but I actually forgot something. So yeah. before we be doing, we go into this, I like asking people who are like top shot collectors to basically give their explanation in you know, one minute or less to the person who's potentially watching this. And it's like, man, what the hell are you guys talking about? Mm -hmm. So how would you explain NBA top shot to them? Yeah, um, I, I would explain NBA Top Shot. Uh, a lot of people like to compare it to physical cards, sports cards, for example. And there's a lot of differences, but, you know, for example, physical sports cards, you can, you can buy a pack, you can open it, you can get the contents inside, you can hold them, you can sell them. That's very similar, um, but in this case, they're not physical cards. They cannot get damaged because they are virtual and they are on the blockchain, meaning that you have true ownership. So with a moment, you know, if you buy serial number 300, well, that serial number 300, if you buy it, that is yours and it's on the blockchain that it's yours. And so that's basically proof of ownership. Um, you know, you couldn't just take a picture of someone else's serial and say that it's yours because the blockchain knows whether it's yours or not. And, and, you know, when you sell that moment, it shows that you sold it and it shows who you sold it to. So that, then there's a ledger of history there and you can see every single person who has touched that moment because the blockchain, Flow blockchain, it'll show that transparency. And that's a cool thing about, um, you know, that's a cool thing about moments um, is that you can literally track. If you have a physical trading card, you don't know who had that before you and you don't know who originally opened that from a pack, but yeah. you know, because of the blockchain technology, you know, the entire history of a moment. So I think that's really cool. And that's how I would describe it is, is a digital, digital moments. You know, it's a video snippet um, right now, just NBA players. Eventually there'll be more, but you can buy, sell, trade uh, and showcase on the NBA Top Shot website right now. I love that thorough explanation, which I appreciate. Let me put you on the spot one more time for the listeners out there, how would you explain NFTs? Yeah. So, um, a lot of people like to explain it and say, um, they're non fungible tokens. And it's like, nobody knows what that means. First of all, like I barely even understand the definition of that, but NFTs in, in layman's terms, um, it, it's, it's basically, 
um, like people like to describe it as like JPEG, for example, like, like the internet, you know, you have the internet, uh, you have different applications, and then, you know, you have an image saved as a JPEG, for example, that's kind of like an NFT, um, except you can copy JPEGs. You can't really copy NFTs. Like, it, it, like I said, with the true ownership thing, you can see evidence of, of the entire history of it. And NFTs are basically, um, you know, kind of like little uh, collectibles almost on, on the blockchain. They don't have to be collectibles, but uh, that's kind of how I would describe it. Uh, it is kind of hard. And, and to put it in layman's terms, it's not exactly easy, but I guess that would be my best uh, description. No, that, that's good. It, it's just cool because like to expand on that, there's just been so much going on in the NFT world. Like people are doing digital art, digital sneakers, and literally digital anything at this point. And it's yeah. being put as NFT and being minted and it's being sold from some, I'm sure you've seen some like ridiculous, like oh yeah, prices for the art. And you know, now you have- million for the Beeple artwork. It's that crazy. Was on, that was a secondary set. That was on the secondary market too. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Um, and there's, there's artists getting into it, like, you know, putting their albums out there, putting tracks. And it's like, it's cool to see, like, I think the next like five years, it's going to be like a crazy amount of like tools and platforms that come out to help yeah. creators like us, like really navigate the NFT world, which is, you know, going to be really, really dope. Um, the other thing I like about the NFTs is like, if you sell something, you know, you can potentially put a percentage that the creator gets for each sale. So if, if I sell you this digital hoodie, you know, and then you sell it back, I'll collect 10% on every time it's sold, which I think is like so cool because as the original owner of the art, that's, I don't think it's ever been like done before. Right. It, it's, it's basically a great, great avenue for artists to like truly not get the short end, short end of the stick like yeah. they were getting before in the physical world, you know? Yeah, I totally agree. So I appreciate the, the breakdowns of the definitions. So let's look at the collection and we'll pull this up in the post edit so people can see it on screen what I'm talking about. What, first of all, like, what's your favorite moment that you own currently? It's 164. Is there one that you can be like, yo, that's the one? Yeah. Uh, the LeBron James Western <laughs> Conference final moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you look that up, it's number 193 out of uh, 999. That one's my favorite moment of all time. I paid $65. You can scroll down to the bottom when you click on the moment. You can see how much I paid for it. I paid $65. Uh, I forget the date, either October or November. Yeah. But, um, you know, I haven't completed very many sets. I've only completed two sets and the Western conference is one of them. And, uh, I was really debating pulling the trigger on that LeBron for a while. Like I didn't really want to have to spend $65 on it just because all the other rare moments were only going for 10. And I was like, 65, right. that's like so much more, you know? And, but I was like, I need, I want to complete my collection and I needed that LeBron and I needed the, um, Anthony Davis. Uh, which I bought the Anthony Davis weeks later um, and I paid 110 for it, which I was like, oh my God, this is so much. Mm -hmm. But that was the, the missing puzzle piece to complete the collection. But that LeBron is is more valuable than the AD. So that's why I like the LeBron the best. You have you have some dope moments. Honestly, like, you know, I just have, I'm lucky I have one LeBron moment. You have like five, like, like solid, like moments. And you have- And I like pulled four of those from a pack too. Back in series one. Sheesh, that is like crazy. Do you have a favorite- I know you're not like a huge avid NBA fan, but do you still have like a favorite player? Like someone you're like, it's you really like watching or like you want to collect their moments. Yeah. LeBron James. LeBron, okay. <laughs> LeBron James hands down. I mean, I mean, if somebody asked me, you know, LeBron James or Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan for sure. A hundred percent. You know, I, I read a lot of books um, growing up. I used to read so much and I loved reading um, about Michael Jordan. Um, and, but but, you know, Michael Jordan's not on the, at least right now, he's not on the platform. So LeBron James is definitely my second, although he's very pricey. So, you know, I haven't really been able to, um, I haven't actually bought any of his moments recently. In, in, uh, I had one series two moment, but uh, I traded with my sister for some other stuff. So. Okay, that's cool. So staying on that, because you just brought up a point that I, I'm like really excited about, hopefully for the future. And they've yeah. done running back series before with some old players, like, you know, uh, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, all these, Tim Duncan, all these kind of guys, Kevin Garnett, you know, what do you think about like Kobe and MJ, like making their way to top shot? Like, do you think, obviously I assume it's going to happen. Do you think that's like on the roadmap for this year? Or you think that's like, we're still a little ways away from something like that? I think when that happens, I mean, there's just going to be another explosion in top shot. And, and the thing is, is that, 
you know, obviously this is great, but um, the team behind Top Shot, like they, they are scrambling right now because there's just so much work to be done and they yes. did not expect this growth this quickly. And so they're going through a lot of growing pains. There's still a lot of problems that need to be fixed. We are still in beta, you know, the website's still in beta. So uh, I don't think that they would want to do that anytime necessarily soon until they can kind of like figure things out and possibly um, wait until they get out of beta. But I, I actually don't know because I don't work for the company. So I, I can't really speak on that. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I do think that, like you said, it will be it will happen after beta. We don't know how long it's still going to be in there, but I think people always just forget like, that this is in beta, like they're still yeah. working on stuff and they're still trying to like handle the traffic and the bots and all the other things that are coming up, you know, every single day from them. So I just think it's cool. The, the First of all, the team at Dapper is like, I would love to like see them one day, like on a screen or a Zoom call and just be able to hear hear their thoughts on everything. But there's some dope individuals, like whoever's building this in the background, like they're killing it. Yeah. And, they're, and, and you know what? They're actually very open to be kind of like jumping on um, podcasts. Obviously, they don't have a ton of time, but it's yeah. like you can definitely reach out to them. And, yeah. you know, um, I'm in contact with a few of them. Like, you know, we DM sometimes and it's like it's nice that they're so open, at least right now, to communicating. Um, you know, obviously in the future when there's a lot more people, it might be a lot harder to get in touch. But exactly. yeah, it's been really cool. And they've been just super like excited about everything, too, you know? Yeah. I think that's the one of the best things about the whole COVID period. It's just like everyone's at home for the most part, but the everyone's has the DMs like way more accessible than what it used to be. So like when you're sliding into these DMs, trying to get someone to do a podcast or do this or do that, like it's almost like a 90%, like the open rate's so much higher, you know, compared to before. And it's been nice to like, for example, even collab with someone like you and, and some other people. Like um, I'm hoping to have like Jacob on the podcast soon, who's like the community lead. So like you said, it has been cool. And like, that's a good tip for people trying to get into the space. Just reach out because you never know who's going to be down. Um, sure. They're down. This, They're down. They're you down. Know? Yeah. <laughs> who's the sleeper moment like that you have? Do you think there's someone's like a sleeper moment that's going to collect value and grow? Yeah. my uh, I just recently bought it. Chris Paul, number seven cereal. Um, I okay, like low here. cereals. I'm like a huge fan of low cereals. Sheesh. Because I'm, I think low cereals are just so underrated. Um, but I think Chris Paul is very underrated. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. You know what 100%. I mean? And, and I'm thinking long-term when I'm buying these low cereals, I'm not looking to flip them. Low cereals, by the way, are not super liquid. So if you're looking to flip quick, don't yeah. be buying low cereals because that's not going to happen. Um, you know what I mean? You got to wait, you got to have diamond hands with those. Um, but I'm willing to wait. And so I, I see so much opportunity right now in the market for low cereals. And so, you know, I've been, yeah, I bought, I bought that number seven, Chris Paul. I've been eyeing it for a while. Uh, I bought uh, a few Kevin Durant. I think Kevin Durant's still very underrated. Yes. I wasn't able to get any single digits, but I got, I got a few double digits, uh, which I, I value the double digits as well, for sure. You're, it's crazy that you have so, so many like low digits. Um, That's what I, 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 I'm on the same page with, as you. I think the serial number is super important. Um, a lot of people, like I said, don't think it is, but I think having a low is great. And like, just like you said, like if you're in it for the long run, it makes complete sense. I also think like Jersey number makes sense, like potentially birthday, like number eights for the China market. Like there's just all these things that could potentially have an effect. And that's why when I try to buy a moment, I do think about the number. Yeah. So I, I just think it's like, I think it's something that's, you know, that gets, gets overlooked and I'm looking at your collection, like just scanning back and forth. I'm like, damn, like four, seven, 15, 23, 20. I'm like, damn, she's got some like, some like you really can sort by low serial number too. That's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> like nervous to see your collection by that. It's probably just like crazy. Darius bait. Yeah, you have like so many. I, like, I pulled that wow. Darius legendary from a pack actually. I didn't you buy pull that. this one. Wow. Yeah, pull that from a pack. Same with my number four Danny Green legendary. I pulled that from a pack too. Jeez Louise, man, that's like a crazy collection. <laughs> that's that's so dope. Spencer Dinwood. Yeah. So, anyways, I'll I'll make sure you pull this up so people don't. I see me just looking at a blank screen, but she has a really cool collection, um, a bunch of packs. What's your thoughts on, I've heard like mixed things about this too. I see in your collection here, you know, you have your, um, your showcase. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on a showcase? Like if I'm a collector, do I need to put a showcase out? Do you think it's something that, that helps when people come to your profile to see what you have? Yeah. Um, showcases. I actually don't do them for other people. I do them for myself because it's kind of a way to organize. So like, for example, if you were, okay. if you're looking at my showcases, it says like, you know, single digit, double digit. I'm like, I was kind of organizing 
Um, and so, yeah, yeah, for me, I just use it as an organization tool just because they don't necessarily have that right now. And I wish that they did have a better, you know what I mean? Um, but right now that's like a good way to utilize that. However, they've done showcase contests in the past where, you know, if, if enough people like your showcase, like you can be entered or, or, and they're going to do that again. They've actually said, they've made a statement that they are going to be doing a, another showcase contest, um, coming up. And that is based off of people liking your showcase. So yeah, I think the showcases are going to be more um, important and valuable in the future. Uh, but right now, I personally just use them as a, organiz- a little organization tool. No, I, like, I actually really love how yours is organized. And it makes complete sense that it's for you to quickly yeah. go and see what you have. But also for me, it's like, oh, rares, you know, single digits. That's perfect. Um, so if we go into the marketplace a little bit, I want to get your thoughts on this. You know, marketplace is all over the place right now. Different prices, different players. Someone is, is watching this or listening to this. They like it. They like our the way we talked about NFTs. They like your definition of top shot. They're like, okay, I want to get in. What would you recommend to someone? Um, you know, what's your advice for a beginner trying to get into this space? Yeah, it can be overwhelming, you know, because there's just so much information. I mean, not information. There's so much going on. Yeah. And it almost seems like sometimes there's like, a lack of information. And so that's kind of why I created my um, Twitch channel. And I've just been going live for like hours, just doing Q and A and trying to help people like understand the basics of NBA top shot. Um, And hopefully, you know, there's more content creators kind of like you who like step up and decide to make more content so that new users can understand. But um, my best thing for new users, honestly, is to just buy the moments you like and hold them long-term. That's honestly my best advice because yeah, you can try to learn how to flip. And like, there's just so much though. And you don't want to kind of get burned by that. If you buy moments that you truly like that you want to hold long-term for years and you believe in the project, then I think that's honestly your best bet. Um, Because, you know, people that have diamond hands, people that hold moments forever, they're going to end up winning in the long-term. So I would say that's a good, that's great advice. Just, just, you know, look at the moments that you really like. And sure, maybe the price, you know, the next day drops a couple dollars and you're like, no, why did I buy it? You know, at this price, you're never going to be able to time the market perfectly. Like, you know, just think long-term with it. And I think you'll be okay. I love that simple advice to the point. Um, that's kind of like what I preach the same ways. Like, you know, if you, if you believe in it and there's players you like, it's, um, it's very minimal investments at the the end of the day. I try and tell people like, cause there's a lot of people who are in the stock market and they can find like some similarities to this with that. It's like, man, like if you guys are long-term like hodlers and you like to hold stuff, this is another great way for you to do that. Um, sure. you brought up a term that I think, I don't think I've ever heard before. So I want you to elaborate on that. Mm-hmm. I think I know what it means though, just based on your context, but what is diamond hands? Diamond hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> diamond hands basically <laughs> means that. So for example, this, this is kind of why I collect single digit moments as well, by the way, is because I do believe that the people eventually all of the single digit moments on the market are going to get bought up. And like, like, of course, you know, the people that buy it just to sell, they'll sell, but eventually they will end up in the long term with people with diamond hands um, who are really thinking about things long term. And, and diamond hands basically means that you're willing to hold for a very, very long time and you don't get scared and you don't get, you're not weak hands. Okay. You don't just, you don't just sell a moment when all of a sudden it drops $20. You don't like freak out and sell something, you know, and that's what diamond hands means. It means, you know, through the th- thick and the thin, you hold on. I love that. That's going to be a clip I use on social media. I think that's so like, I like how you described it. And I think I never heard that term before, but obviously I'm aware of like weak hands and just people being afraid. That's like a perfect way to describe it. Um, yeah. And I'm, ex- yeah. I'm excited to meet more people like yourself who are in this for like the long run. So that over the next like X amount of years, we can all grow together, but also then we can start seeing like everyone's collection build, trade moments, kind of interact together. So that goes into Max's point, which is like the community, the mm-hmm. community behind Top Shot. Um, so I've been a part of a lot of cool things, the different brands and whatnot, even the, the brand we have now in the lab, like we have a ra- like a rabid community. Like they love like super fans. They love the content. They love what we put out, but NBA top shot, like it's, it's starting to take it to like a new level where I'm seeing like the discords obviously like is wild. I don't really go in the discord much, but I do check the announcements, <laughs> but just like the other people like yourself who are building their own like micro communities and like the first mint and all these other podcasts, like I love seeing it. And I feel like the community side behind what's being built is like the most important thing for it, you know, getting big in the future. So what's, what's been your experience so far with the community? Yeah. I mean, I, 
So like as, as kind of a content creator with that mindset, when I first got into Top Shot, I was like, you know, there's so much opportunity for content creators right now in this industry. Um, and then especially once January hit and like things started getting crazy, I was like, oh my gosh, people are just hungry for information. And like, we need more creators in the space, just like pumping out content. And I just almost felt like since I had started in October, since I had, you know, experience, since I am a content creator, since I'm okay with putting my face on camera, I was like, I need, I felt, I feel like it's my obligation to be creating content for these people. Like, I felt like it was my responsibility, you know? And, um, so I just started with my Twitter. I started with my Twitter. I dedicated my Twitter. I had like six followers originally, just like my personal account. And I had never really gone on Twitter much. And I was like, I'm just going to dedicate my Twitter to NBA Top Shot. And Twitter actually became the number one social platform, you know, besides Discord for NBA Top Shot. And, and, um, and even now it's kind of the number one because you can get quick updates, qu like out quick. And, you know, people can turn the notifications on. And so I just became kind of like the go-to for, um, you know, when pack shop, when new information was released, because I'm just like constantly tweeting about everything in real time when it's happening and people are just loving it. And so just recently, about a week ago, I migrated over. Um, now I'm growing my Twitch account, you know, started a week ago, I have 500 followers already. And, you know, I have, I have uh, some subscribers just, just became affiliate with Twitch. Okay. Now I can do, I do that. It. And just, there's just so much opportunity in the space. And I tweeted that out today that it's like, there's going to be so many bumps in the road. You know, we're still in beta and it's like, it's not just um, about like the people that are behind the scenes in Top Shot. Like we need leaders in the community and creators in the community that are going to be helping people through this tough time, like through these tough times, because at the end of the day, that's, that's what community is all about. You know, you're preaching so many good things. I love it. It, it, it gets me excited. Cause like, I'm hoping over the next, like, whatever X amount of years, like there'll be more individuals like, like yourself that are coming out and speaking like this and excited about it and wanting to like first build the foundation and like be able to teach and not so much just like chase, you know, I hate using the word cloud, but just chase that to get somewhere. It's like, no, I'm going to help you build it. And then together we'll kind of get, you know, where, wherever that is in the next few years. So that gets yeah. me excited. Um, going back to past before I forget, what do you think, what do you think is going to be like, do you have any, any ideas about some future packs that could potentially drop that you think could be like huge. Like let's not talk about Kobe or MJ. For example, this one, the rising stars one this weekend. I think that was like, was dope. Is yeah. there like, do you have, I'm sure when you're at home, like going through or buying moments, you're probably like, man, I would love to see this. I would love to see that. Like if you were behind the scenes, part of Dabra labs and you're like, okay, guys, this is the next pack. What would you potentially, you know, pitch? Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, there's just so many things. Um, I, you know, I want to see Shaq break a backboard. Oh, for <laughs> I sure. Know. I think that'd be sick. They, they have already, you know, said that they're going to be releasing more uh, run it back packs. Okay. And yeah. so we're going to see more players that, you know, not, that aren't necessarily in the NBA playing right now, but that, you know, used to be. And, and I think that's going to be huge, you know, bringing players back from the past. I think that's just going to be huge. Uh, and I just think there's so much potential with, you know, what they can even do. I'm more excited about what they can do with these moments, you know, building more utility around them. So for example, if, if you don't know, there's going to be a game called Hardcore, and it's a mobile game that Top Shot is going to come out with where you can actually play with your moments essentially. And so that's going to increase the utility of these moments. So it's not just going to be about collecting them just to collect them and, and just to do challenges with them. It's going to be about, you can actually like use them you know, in a game. And so I think that's going to be super interesting. I'm excited to see what exactly that game is going to be. We don't, we don't really know the details on that, but I just think there's so much potential on what you can do with the moments as well. And that's what I'm really excited for. First of all, I had no idea about the game. So thanks for dropping that on the show. Uh, You're welcome. That's, that's sick. Like is it? so that's what gets me so excited, right? When we talk about like elevating the, the fan or the consumer experience, mm -hmm. like now you're just taking it another step further. Where it's like, hey, yeah, you got these moments, you know, here's another thing to do with them. And I'm sure there's probably more on the roadmap, but that's cool. Like, yeah. cause now it's like, okay, I always like think of this, like, I don't know if you played FIFA or anything growing up or even NBA 2K, like my team, where it's like, you know, you're collecting these moments and they're part of like my team. That's like the game mode. And now right. we go play with them and we see if we can be your team. And then maybe there's tournaments down the road, man, there's like a lot, that's yeah. cool. A lot of like yeah. a lot of cool potential for that, especially for like the younger kids and, and the game side of it. For sure. Cause they're already used to, you know, doing that. And, and 
they're already used to spending money in gameplay. You know, people buy skins, yeah. people yeah. buy, you know, weapons, people buy stuff, you know, for the game. And they don't even have true ownership of those things that they're buying. And those things don't even appreciate in value. They literally lose value when the next version of the game comes out. So it's like, you know, um, with NBA Top Shot, like it's gonna be interesting, you know, these are NFTs. These are actually gonna be appreciating in value and they're gonna be assets for your gameplay. Like I think, yeah, especially for the younger generations, they will quickly understand what this is and they're gonna quickly, very, very quickly adapt to this. Dang, this is, a, this is it has an, such an exciting future. This is why I love finding people like you to chop it up with. Cause like, you know, you have different information. We all have different points, but like to be able to like hear that stuff. And like now it opens my mind to like other, you know, broader possibilities, which is, you know, just makes the whole like thing more exciting, right? Especially like collecting. Um, what what do you want to okay so nba top shots one i'm assuming if there's other sports that come in especially if you're, you're akin to them i don't know if you're like an nfl fan or a WNBA fan you'll try to get on the ground floor and whatnot are you going to be i'm this is probably like the stupidest question i'm gonna ask you the whole day okay. but is it safe to say that you're going to be hodling these and passing them on to your children if you know 20 30 years from now like that's is that where your mindset is like for the majority of the higher end is like hodl until there's a great opportunity. Yeah. And I'm already kind of thinking about that now um, where it's like, I, I have little nieces and nephews, you know, cause my brother has children and right. I'm like, I'm like, um, I'm saving some moments for them, you know? And, and I just think that, yeah, it's just so cool. Cause it's, it's a way to pass down wealth. You know what I mean? And, and I definitely didn't come from wealth. I'm not even, I, I honestly, I'm like, definitely still pushing it here. You know, I need to withdraw badly, but, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm definitely not the best financial uh, situation right now, but I just think about the future and, and I just understand that, you know, this is just going to help so many people a get out of their, you know, financial hardship, hardship situation and B be able to kind of pass down, you know, what they were able to be early on and, and, you know, whoever they pass it down to in their family is going to be able to benefit and yeah, you know, there's just so much awesome, awesome potential with this, especially long term. And when I first got into this in October, I believed in the project long term. And that was the only reason why when I didn't even have any capital to invest, I still invested because I was like, dude, I really believe in this project. And no, I didn't think that it would blow up in January and have that huge explosion in January, you know, and then another huge one in February. I didn't expect NBA to be actually retweeting something that you know, Top Shot tweeted about today that happened for the first time. I didn't expect people to be talking about it on ESPN, Shaq to say, put that on Top Shot. Like, exactly. you know, I don't think a lot of us in early expected that to happen so quickly, you know, but since it did, it's like, great, you know, and we're looking forward to the future because yeah, there, there's just so much potential with it. And we're all still early because, you know, we're still in beta for one and for two, go ask, you know, 10 people, that you just randomly know, ask them if they know what NBA top shot is and see if they know. And most people will say no. Yeah. hundred percent. They're probably not going to know. I think what you just said, that little mini speech is like the perfect way to kind of like end this first segment. And the reason I'm going to say that is because I actually want to have you on for like future ones and like, see if we can do more follow-ups and just connect and just like continue to create content together and like build this community. And I want to sure. see where you're collect. I want to see like in like one or two months, like what your collection looks like then or like you know where you know i'm sure in two months top shot the whole landscape will change just like it does every other day so it'll be cool to like have someone else to like just connect with and talk to and kind of like you know like i said build the community with so for sure i'm excited for that yeah i appreciate that thank you so first i want to say like thank you because you came on you gave me 50 minutes almost an hour of your time which i i genuinely appreciate anytime someone gives me their time especially for a podcast secondly i want to say can you let everyone know, obviously we're going to pull some stuff up and we'll have your little handle on the editing, but like, where can they follow you? What time do you stream? Cause that's super important. You know, how can they connect with you? Yeah. Um, first of all, I wanted to say, you know, thank you for having me on the show. Like I definitely love doing podcasts and collabing with people. I, I just think there's so much opportunity in this space. More people should be doing stuff like you and, and, you know, kind of following your lead on this. Cause I think it's really smart. Um, but yeah, definitely follow me. My, my main platform right now is Twitter, especially if you want quick updates on what's yep. happening, you want to stay in the loop. Steph Sudo, just my first and last name, S-T-E-P-H-S-U-T-T-O, Steph Sudo uh, is my Twitter. And then from there, you know, the link in my bio right now is my Twitch, which is just NBA Top Shot Steph. So um, I'm, I'm doing a lot more 
content on there, longer form content, right? Because with Twitter, it's just little tweets. But I've been yeah. going live for hours. Um, I don't have a schedule down right now, I'll be honest, but I, I've been trying to go live like since I started a week ago, I've been trying to go live like practically every day, uh, usually in the evenings. So I'll do my best to create a schedule and, and post about that. But for now, it's just kind of random. I love it. I'm actually looking on the Twitch right now. There's like some good like hour, like almost two hour type stuff, which is like yeah. definitely long form content. So I'm assuming you're getting some good viewers in there. Some of these actually have like almost like over like a thousand views for the most part for all of them, which is like good. Congrats to you because building on Twitch can be tough, but if you're funneling from Twitter and TikTok, I think you're going to do a great job. And um, I'm not even funneling from uh, TikTok because that's a totally different niche. So like my TikTok followers right. don't even know about my, uh, <laughs> my Twitch or my, it, it's been hard to kind of juggle two different um, niches right. actually. And I'm, I have a really hard time doing that. I've been kind of, uh, my TikTok has been suffering. Like I've been kind of sacrificing that low key <laughs> and uh, you know, and it's kind of like, it sucks. Cause it's like to really go all in on one thing, you will have to sacrifice things, you know? And, and that's just, that's just life. That's just how it is. You're always going to have to sacrifice things, you know, to really go all in on, on, on one thing. But I do believe in the future of um, Top Shot. And I do believe there's just so many people that need help, you know, starting out right now. And there's just not enough information that's out there and not enough creators. And so I do really feel like it's kind of my duty and my obligation to be creating content for the people. And, you know, all these new users that are just coming in here and like, whoa, all this stuff's happening. It just seems yeah. so overwhelming and crazy. I love yeah. that. I love that you want to teach them how to navigate it. Um, so we're going to do this more. We'll collab. Hopefully we can collab more in the future. Obviously we'll stay in contact. Make sure you guys follow Steph, check out her live streams. Her and her sister are making some like really, really dope content. Outside that, like I said, just thank you again. This was fun. It was like really exciting. I was able, able to learn stuff, which is always, you know, uh, you know, a great opportunity. And I'm sure as the listeners, you guys probably learned a stupid amount. Hopefully you did anyway. But I'll leave you there. Follow up on Steph. We've got a lot more stuff coming on the Find Your Breakthrough podcast. Thank you guys as always for listening and tuning in. Peace.